are back to rank some Keter class SCPs. So, hold on, I gotta change the fonts. But <laughs> I put Break, huh? I put the chat uh, font color as white in a white background. <laughs> what? See, that's I forgot to change it. But anyway, now let's get on to the first SCP. SCP-409 resembles a large quartz crystal approximately 1.5 meters tall and 0.6 meters wide. Any objects coming in contact with SCP-409 will begin to crystallize after three hours. This oh. effect will occur in any material other than granite. The crystallization will spread by approximately 2.5 centimeters per minute and will convert the entire ob object or organism inside and out. Subjects report this effect to be extremely painful and f similar to frostbite. After a complete crystallization, the object will begin to make snapping and creaking noises for approximately 20 minutes before bursting into thousands of fragments with great force. Anything touched or by touching a fragment will immediately begin to crystallize. Nothing at this time is able to reverse the effect in organic matter. Dixco3T has gifted one subs to viewers. <laughs> Thank you, Dix. <sighs> I'm glad my huh? I glad my my I fixed my emotes. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Why is Dix demanding that you fight her? I don't know. What did you do, Bright? I have no idea. Maybe the April Fool's prank. <laughs> That's entirely... That would be entirely justified. <laughs> anyway. Uh, including... Imp I'll read this sentence again. Nothing at this time is able to reverse the effect in organic matter, including amputation of affected areas. Inorganic matter will only crystallize for a few cent centimeters around point of contact. SCP-409 was recovered and expunged. Under a pile of crystal shards several feet deep, losses of personnel during recovery were high. Oh. Dix wants... Dix... Hatchet wants to fight. Here, here, I'm, I'm, fight. I'm fight, keeping an eye fight, on the... Fight. 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 Anyway. Shut, shut your stupid fucking bird ass mouth. Anyway, that was the description for SCP-409. Uh, as long as you keep it in a giant granite room, it's not going to... <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Here Nothing, goes my dragon. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Don't worry about it, dragon. No, I am very worried. It's nothing you need to worry about. Anyway, uh. To be honest, I'm always worried. So you... it's nothing now. I... Like, I'm saying, like. I'm not saying this needs to be reclassified, but I'm like, it's probably a really low threat because you have to get near it or touch it. Oh, so it's as much of a threat as you are. Fuck you. Effective, like, I could see this being one of the most potentially dangerous things if someone just, like, dropped it out of an airplane into a populated city. Yeah. But it doesn't move around. So, like, the only means of it spreading is the shattering thingamajig. And as long as you keep things within a big granite box, right. fine. So I'd say certain groups. Right. Oh, and there was an addendum about it where they actually did find a cure. But they can't use it very often. Because it's SCP-500, if you know what that is. And if you don't know, SCP-500 is the pill that can cure all diseases. Yeah. 
and there's only like I a very limited that supply. From... I almost said something, and then I remembered we were not an 18 plus chat. <laughs> yeah, it's about Hi, to Dix. say. Hi, I figured this was probably more easier than me being in chat. Probably. Why are you trying to fight Hatchet? Also, um, I feel like I said I would naked fight Hatchet. <laughs> This SCP, I feel like, would attack most people on this server. Except for me. Uh, well, maybe not. Hold on. SCP-414 is a phenomenon that targets asocial humans and is categorized into two derivative effects. SCP-414-1 and SCP-414-2. The asociality may range from minor introversion to complete isolation. SCP-414 primarily affects individuals under the neat demographic and no regional preferences. Yeah, I, I know of this one. SCP-414 begins when a humanoid in a circular mass referred to SCP-414-1 appears in front of a, of a targeted human. SCP-414-1 typically claims to be an employee for a local social work organization. SCP-414-1 are uniformly tall humanoids wearing circular masks and clothing that covers the whole body. SCP-414-1 only appear when attempting to contact a targeted individual and disappear after successful contact has occurred. SCP-414-1 is believed to have a single collective consciousness capable of sapience, cognizance, and intelligence. SCP-414-2 is a chronic degenerative condition resulting from any successful interaction between a targeted subject and an instance of SCP-414-1. Successful interaction occurs when SCP-414-1 has a successful face-to-face -face conversation or contact with a targeted subject. A subject that has contracted SCP-414-2 undergoes four stages last between 2 to 276 days, with a fifth stage believed to be permanent. Right? Yeah? Right, you're uh, kind of breaking up. Mm -hmm. Gosh damn it, Discord. I'm fine on Streamlabs, and I can't see th through that. Fucking hell. Okay, where did it cut off? I can reread. Well, like, it, it wasn't that you would, like, completely cut off. It was that there was a lot of breaking up. Oh, that was... I At, at the very, very least, I could understand everything that happened. It was just you were going super robotic and breaking it up like that. Am I fine now? Sounds yeah. fairly good, but it could change in an instant for all I know. Well, it's not my mic. Because everything is fine on every other end. I don't know why Discord is being it's a just, bitch. It's just because of you. Anyway, individuals who are under 30 years of age or who receive SCP-414-2 through physical contact progress through stages at an, an accelerated rate. Stage 1. Subjects feels increasingly lonely, coping me mechanisms not involved face-to-face -face interaction to distant from loneliness cause an increase of feeling. Subject experiences a loss of pleasure and while participating in the solitary activity. Stage 1 advances when the subject interacts with another human to alleviate loneliness. I'm rereading to make sure there's not... Okay. Subject experiences a total loss of things when participating in activities not involved in in-person in in interaction with others. Subjects begin to have difficulty in recalling events in their life and that contributed significantly to their sense of self, but is cognizant of and can recall having such events. Stage 2 advances when the subject interacts with other humans at least once every 7 days. So, stage 3. Subject is incapable of feeling fulfillment unless interacting with other humans once every 5 days. They are unable to recall ever enjoying solitary activity or their life before the age of 13. Subjects remain cognizant of this inability. 
Their sense of self is reduced. Stage 3 advances when the subject participates in social events at least once every seven, every, every seven days. Stage 4, subject is incapable of feeling fulfillment without interacting with other humans once every 45 hours. They are unable to recall having significant relationships lasting more than two years and are cognizant of this inability. Any sense of self is reduced to name, gender, age, and current emotional state. Subject usually becomes highly productive to feel fulfillment participating in a range of social activities such as volunteering and hosting gatherings. The circumstances to advance stage 4 are currently unknown. Stage 5 is currently considered the final stage. Subject develops hallucinations and sensations of being physically hollow or empty when not currently participating in social activities causing them to become upset when not in proximity to another person for any length of time over 15 minutes. They are unable to recall having significant relationships and are cognizant of this inability. At least, redacted individuals have been confirmed to have reached stage 5. Uh oh. For a list of confirmed this. Oh, wait, hold on. This, that's something different. Anyway. There is no cure for treatment available beyond coping mechanisms. SP414-2 has a fatality rate of 46.78% over 5 years and 67.84% over 10 years. Individuals over the age of 40 have significantly higher fatality rates of 87.23% over 5 years and 93.85% over 10 years. All fatalities are a result of Word I cannot say on Twitch. Uh oh. Yeah, and that's the description. So, an SCP that ta attacks antisocial people. Huh? And Hatchet, you said you already know this SCP? I already know this one ah. from one of the uh, uh, YouTubers I've watched for a good long while. Ah, yeah, this is my first time realizing this, and yeah, I feel like it would actually attack some people in this server. <laughs> yeah, not to mention the fact that let's just be frank, uh, as as a mere phenomena, this thing is like borderline eugenic in the fact that it just automatically is going to be targeting primarily neurodivergent people. Whether or not it has, like, the actual cognizant capability to tell what it's doing, it's... Yeah. Fucked. As for its threat level, I'd say certain groups. Because yeah. while you can't actually tie it down... Like, it's only going to affect certain people. Mm hmm If it spreads to other people, then that would be worrying. Well, yeah. Like, if it was, like, any person who reaches stage 5 of the condition, then becomes contagious and will spread it to other people, then, yeah, yeah Is... that would... Does it kill, though? Like... The way that it kills is by rendering someone unable to feel happiness and joy because they have to feel fulfilled entirely through social interaction. Thus, they end up doing the thing that... Can't be said uh, on Twitch. That, that Twitch doesn't <laughs> want us to mention. Isn't there... Isn't that just capitalism? What the No. <laughs> no! <laughs> I mean, it's not, but like... Uh, like dragon what the only fuck? feeling fulfilled and happy when you do shit like that like I don't know I'm not thinking I'm fighting a giant robot <laughs> that statement hurt my brain <laughs> technically there is nothing wrong with blaming everything wrong in the world on capitalism 
No, they're actually hilariously. I was literally just explaining to my partner that Penguin was the small child that <laughs> often made inappropriate comments. Oh, bye, Jerry. <laughs> I, 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 I blame I'm random. Only free to join, and I hear inappropriate comments from Dick. I'm just wondering what happened. <laughs> That's all you need to know. <laughs> But to clarify, in fact, there actually is a problem with blaming everything wrong in the world on capitalism because then you're going to do that overgeneralization thing that tends to hurt social progress. Yeah. yeah. That is that that is the that is a very very easy way to goose step your way into being a nozzle. <laughs> I feel like I can already tell the simple answer to this, to what's going on, is probably Penguin said something stupid. Yes, <laughs> that is the simple answer. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's, um, basically, uh, I know one that you already know, Jerry, but the first one we did was SCP-409, the crystal. Oh. Yeah, and the other one was SP-414, which basically attacks uh, neurodivergent people. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. It specifically targets uh, people who are, to some extent, uh, antisocial, whether that be completely isolated or just somewhat introverted, and then it infects them with a disease that makes it so that they can only receive fulfillment through constant social interaction up to the point of their sense of self being literally nothing but their current emotion their name and their gender and it has a high and, and it very it has an extremely high likelihood especially in older people of leading to cause of death that which does not want us to talk about yeah yeah Anyway. That's also an to say around a penguin, so I, oh, okay. Yeah, I was careful. I didn't like been say. Been on the internet a long time. I penguin, you are you are still under eighteen. You are still a child. Still a child. I mean, there were some words in that document I didn't say because Dragon was here. I that caught myself. <laughs> yeah, I was willing to guess that sound like there's little stutters where you just didn't say something yeah <laughs> i always like pre-read a little bit ahead before i continue reading to make sure there's you know nothing <laughs> but anyway uh there are going to be words in here that are from a russian language i think and i'm going to butcher it so just saying that Uh, but anyway, SCP-435-1 is a type 3 iron meteorite weighing approximately redacted kilograms, showing a significant weathering. Spectro uh, spectroscopic and chemical analysis show a composition of over 99% iron, which at normal densities can only be accounted for 0%. I mean, not 0%. Gosh damn it. <laughs> Redacted percent. I read the wrong number. Of the measured weight. Age is indeterminate, but analysis of weathering suggests it has been exposed to atmosphere for at least redacted years. There's a lot of redacted. SCP-435-2 is an irregularly shaped object that currently has has approximate dimensions of 15 meters by 12 meters by 48 meters. SP-435-2 appears somewhat blurred in the visible spectrum, but computer-enhanced imagery in various spec spectra has shown a complex structure showing a, a three-fold symmetry along the longitudinal axis. Extending from the axis are long tube-like structures that share characteristics both with biological organisms and with mathematical models of higher order fractals. The structures show undulating movements even when SP-435 
dash 2 is stationary. SP-435-2 does not appear to have mass or inertia, and appears only to be visible due to refraction of light passed through it and because of data expunge resulting in uh, Karankov radiation of varying intensity. Any physical object with mass that comes in contact with SP-435-2 will suffer an instantaneous change in velocity and direction away from SP-435-2 without any loss in energy. This is apparently caused by being reflected through an, a higher order spatial dimension. If the affected mass is a solid phase, uh, a solid phase this reflection will cause a solid but uh, cause a change in topology that can result in either an inversion, a reflection, or a data expunged in higher levels of gamma and radiation. Do you think they like the word data expunged? Maybe. But anyway, because of these characteristics, it is currently impossible to directly affect SCP-435-2 with any means currently at the Foundation's disposal. However, it can be moved indirectly by moving SCP-435-1 SP-435-2 maintains a fixed position relative to SP-435-1 as long as SP-435-1 is sufficiently illuminated. Movements of SP-435-1 have caused SP-435-2 to move a proportional amount maintaining a fixed distance and bearing. SCP-435-1 ceases to uh, be sufficiently Illuminated for a period of time ex exceeding 8.3. I don't know what that is. I'm only going to say weird U symbol S. I don't know what that is. But anyway, the behavior of SCP-435-2 will change. SCP-435-2 will enter a active state and begin randomly erratic movements orbiting the location of SCP-435-1. Average distance from SCP-435-1 will increase, and the apparent volume of SCP-435-1, I mean, sorry, dash 2 will also increase. The rate of increase in both distance and size appears to undergo a geometric progression over time, and neither has been observed to decrease. This behavior will increase only when... SP-435-1 is again sufficiently illuminated, at which point SP-435-2 will cease motion at whatever location it is at the moment. They remain there fixed in relation to SP-435-1. The threshold for this effect currently appears to be between 500 and 650 lux, and it appears that this threshold may increase by approximately redacted percent whenever SP-435-2 enters an active state. Because of SP-435-2's interaction with normal matter, an active state is considered extremely dangerous, passing through large volumes oh. of air at speeds in excess of 500 meters per second, dramatically increased levels of radiation, and if SP-435-2 intersects water or any land mass, that expunged. Any active state lasting longer than 90 seconds constitutes a potential XK-class end-of-the-world scenario and requires the initiation of contingency 435XK-alpha. Oh, this is pretty easy to rank. Yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty easy to rank. Yeah, I didn't even realize I was going to have XK in its document. <laughs> well, we have oh. re-ranked things before. It's just this does seem to fit. Yeah, it, it, it fits. Not safe, oh. not safe. <laughs> oh, oh no, Aderna, you might want to change your name. The child is present. What? Oh. Oh, hi, Aderna. <laughs> um. 
Oh, not a wolf. child, not a child appropriate name. Not a child appropriate name. Change it back. What? That one's only for kindergarten dreams. Oh. <laughs> the teacher. Yes, the teacher. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh wait, I turned a left. Yeah, they don't like to change their name real quick. Ah. <laughs> hey, Adorna's back. I still know what it was. There we go. Just, yeah. just that, that it's, you can change your name back to that for the next Kinder stream. <laughs> oh goodness. They don't need to change their name to that at any point for any reason. They don't need to. <laughs> also, uh, Adorna, you joined at a good time. Because the next SCP is a joke SCP. I didn't say they need to. I'm just... yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> oh my. What the fuck? <laughs> Alright. Anyway. SCP 444 J is a convention celebrating the creation and consumption of fruit preserves. What? SCP 444 J is. Globally recognized as the premier convention for fruit preserves, with the event often drawing significant attention of it on an international scale. Despite this, SP 444 J has no memetic or compulsory effect. The event is merely a popular curios among the public. This event lasts three days in duration, although more recent SCP 444 J have lasted an average of six days. During this period, activity from both the Foundation and known groups of interest will significantly decrease, with all parties focused primarily on attending and enjoying SCP-444-J. SCP-444-J's operation directly correlates with a sizable increase in anomalous phenomenon and activities. Universal spatial and temporal cohesion will suffer immense strain, most likely due to the sudden introduction of conflicting anomalies to baseline reality in mass. These anomalies are extremely volatile in both nature and narrative coherence, propagating more frequently with densely populated areas. And an increase in demonic storms and severe weather will result in the mass restructuring of continental landforms soon after formerly dormant Eschatological figures will awaken and attempt to reshape baseline reality on a universal scale. Worldwide casualties will often reach the hundreds of thousands in total, with this death total increasing with each passing SCP-444-J. The only area unaffected by SCP-444-J's anomalous effects is the area occupied by SCP-444-J itself. Attendants of SCP-444-J are often completely unaware of its anomalous effects, too engrossed and immediately, admittedly enthralling fruit preserves and fruit preserves related activities. Upon the conclusion of SCP-444-J, its anomalous effects will gradually cease, Pro produced anomalous objects will fade into obscurity, while others will suddenly cease to exist entirely. On average, normalcy will be restored within one month. Occasionally, objects will transcend this obscurity, although there are few and far between. As the time of documentation, there have been a total of three SB444-J occurrences, with the third having taken place between uh, March 9th, 2020 and March 14th, 2020, resulting in the manifestation of over 170 separate anomalous objects and events. The containment of these anomalies are considered low priority as the world would take as it, this would take away the from the excitement of waiting for the next SP444-J. And there you go, that's SP444-J. It's just a Keter class that caused the bullshit of 2020. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> See, the thing is, this is like, yeah, that's literally how it is. <laughs> I... 
How the fuck do we rank that? <laughs> I mean, it has killed hundreds of thousands. I mean, yeah, but... It's true. That's true. <laughs> That's... This one broke me. A convention about fruit preserves killed hundreds of thousands of people. <laughs> Presumably causing COVID. <laughs> while also creating other anomalies that cause even more damage. <laughs> I never thought a fruit preserve could create an anomaly. Well, now I know. It's, it's not a fruit preserve, it's a convention. Oh well, yeah, a convention. Um... Continent? <laughs> What I'd say. Why are some of the joke SCPs so powerful? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. It's joke it SCP fun. that caused 2020. Need we go on about its danger level? We have a, a joke SCP that can end all of reality if, if muttered. <laughs> and a convention about fruit preserves that can kill hundreds of thousands of people. <laughs> what? what was? Is it okay? So isn't that that convention? Isn't that convention like annual? So no, it depending on uh the specific. Uh, it seems to be uh since it happened twice in one year, maybe biannual. <laughs> Oh no. Oh, so it's, oh no. Uh oh. That's so, actually, Yeah. Okay, uh -huh. so so probably world. Next K. Yeah, because it can fight. okay. Because potentially you might get to the point where that thing creates a nuclear war. Are you eating your microphone? No, I'm just. I I have a mask on, so. Ah. Uh, uh. Oh, oh, and there's something extra, where a doctor or from the foundation wanted them to, you know, to actually put a stop to it. <laughs> Everyone in O five council said no. Fuck. <laughs> Cause it would ruin fuck. the fun of the convention. That makes sense. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a, it's an anomalous object that affects the O5 council and completely fucks with their reasoning to think that the <laughs> safety of mankind is of less importance than our fucking fun convention about fruit preservatives. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think, yeah, to its logical extent, it could be XK. <laughs> oh, moving it up. <laughs> I was just thinking of, like, previous things rather than logical extents. <gasps> My gosh. Would, could a bird fight God? What? I like what the how, fuck? I like how you mention birds, because the next SCP is a flock of them. Exactly. Oh, you you like you like birds, don't you, Bright? No, I was just pulling up the Keter class. Fuck it's you. her kin. Of course she likes birds. Anyway. We are bird kin. Shut up. Anyway, SCP-469 appears to be gargantuan mound of large avian wings with white glossy feathers curled into a massive ball. Oh, wait. This is not a bird. <laughs> <laughs> I, I read avian I read avian and I thought bird <laughs> are you talking right. about the angel SCP that looks like a giant ball of feathers but there's a person inside yeah right that is not a bird right no I saw avian I kind of I know you think the angel is one of your fellow people but they're not a bird fuck you I'm not a damn bird anyway. you could say that you could say that Writes a little bird brain. <laughs> anyway, curled into a massive ball measuring eight 
8.84 meters in diameter and weighing several tons. Each wing varies in size and span, ranging from a few centimeters to several meters, with the largest estimated to be at least 53 meters in length, and branch off one another in seemingly random fractal-like arrays. X-rays have revealed the wings to possess long chains of small vertebrae-like bones as opposed to a few long bones in a typical avian wing, allowing each wing to have exceptional flexibility akin to a snake. These chains of bone can also lock together to form a more rigid structure to aid in flight or defense. At the center of the mass is a large humanoid creature, approximately 6 meters in height, curled up in a fetal position to which all the wings are attached at its spine. Further details regarding this humanoid are unknown, as the density of both the wings and its body make it difficult to study remotely. SCP-469 appears to feed exclusively on sound waves, using the energy gained from sound to grow newer and bigger wings and feathers, as well as repairing damaged ones. The louder the sound and or higher the frequency, the faster SCP-469 grows, though it can be sustained by any sound. It seems to have a preference for rhythmic musical noises, especially those produced by bells. SCP-469 itself, however, seems to make no noise whatsoever due to the sound-absorbing structure of its plumage. Any human or animal that touches or gets too close to the surface of the creature will quickly in which will, will be quickly enveloped by the outstretching wings and drawn inside. Despite the feather soft appearance, each bar has a sharp point that quickly pierces through the clothing and into bare flesh, releasing a, a potent mix of stimulants that immediately activates the pain receptors in the victim's body, with additional stimulants keeping the victim from passing out too quickly. This is done by making the victim scream loudly, th thus feeding SP-469 even more until the victim either passes out or dies of blood loss and or suffocation from being buried beneath newly, newly overgrown wings. SCP-469 is responsible for the loss of four personnel this way. Touching SCP-469 with dead or non-living objects does not have the same effect, though it actively resists any attempt to physically penetrate its core body. All termination methods of SP-469 have been unsuccessful. Flamethrowers were initially used, but the noise from, dis from the discharging propellant as well as the crackling flames gave SP-469 the energy to grow faster than it could be destroyed. Cutting and slicing instruments due to their close range result in failure and, s and loss of, of two agents. Acid immersion is being suggested. And that's it. Well, see, so can the can, can the thing grow indefinitely? As long Does as it keeps mention? getting fed sound. Fucking hell! Also, why didn't can they... I give it a burrito? No. Anyway, oh. you would be, you would be its burrito. <laughs> anyway, why don't they just use the Nerf gun? mean there's an scp that's a nerf gun that's been modified that if fired it makes that that object become a lesser state of itself so it gets nerfed in a way yes i would imagine that they're hesitant to use that on this thing because isn't there also a chance that that lesser state can cause something severely damaging to the surrounding area. Possibly. Anyway, if left unchecked, and if this thing got anywhere near a city, it could very quickly just turn to Godzilla. And kill everything in it. <laughs> <sighs> just be. No, it'll be in gears. It, I I'm, think. It's. A ar giant armadillo Godzilla monster that can roll up into a uh -oh. ball. That's what that's what that joke was. 
I know literally nothing about this stuff. Oh dear. Anyway, I'd I'd say its logical extent if left up unchecked is probably XK. Yeah. <laughs> At the very least continent. I'm more likely thinking continent because we are maintaining it. Fair, yeah. Let's see. Sonic the Hedgehog be a good fighter against SCPs, oh. seeing how fast he is. It's only SCP, dude. Yes, there's our SCPs that can bend reality to their will. They would die in an it's instant. Sonic. And it I'm just... sorry, but it doesn't matter how fast Sonic is. He can't handle the shy guy. <laughs> or the Scarlet King. He would just snap his fingers and die instantly. I'm watching a video of Sonic getting taken down by shy guys. <laughs> I, well, yeah, that sounds really not entertaining. those guys, but like, just... Oh, and like... definitely 6A2 would knock him out in an instant. Like weaker ish SCPs. Well, Ones you can realistically to... like be on even ground with. Well, yeah, but you you said could he be good at fighting SCPs? You didn't say could he be good at fighting SCPs given the stipulation that they are somewhat weak enough to be on even ground with him. Also, SCP twelve can easily kill him. I'm not sure if anyone knows what that one is. I don't remember. The blood note sheet. Oh, yeah. You just throw that at him. Dead. Okay, but what I about this what version of Sonic? Wait, I need to show you the version of Sonic I'm talking about. No. Yes. Like I said, though, uh, does Sonic know how to write? Does he know how to read? <laughs> it, I mean, He's it doesn't matter. I mean, it He's doesn't matter. The SCP is still going to work on him. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna make it make him right in some way <laughs> whether it's legible I or not dumb posts the version of sonic i'm talking about what the fuck is that <laughs> it's sonic <laughs> where am i looking go to dumb, dumb posts post. Don't post. Anyway, while I'm pulling up the next one, you can look at that shit. <laughs> that version of Sonic could fight any SCP. That is not Sonic. That is your <laughs> weird dog thing you were talking about earlier that aren't dogs. That is not a dog. <laughs> it what is a fuck? dog. It's a wobble dog. I fail to see how that thing could fight anything, considering the fact that it would have trouble simply existing. <laughs> it has six legs. Anyway. That doesn't help it. <laughs> anyway, let's... Uh, hi, Pika. <laughs> We're about to get into next SCP, and this one is actually short. So, bear with me. Uh, SCP-496 is a substance composed primarily of calcium carbonate. That covers a 35 square kilometer area of the sea floor, 84 kilometers off the coast of, I'm going to butcher this, uh, Jakarta, Indonesia. The substance has characteristics of a waterborne contagion that is capable of infecting any an organism via contact with the skin. Once SCP-496 has infected an organic substance, it will begin the process of converting all organic matter of the subject into SCP-496. Signs of symptoms of SCP-496 infection include batches of red or skin colored welts, severe itching, painful swelling of the lips, eyelids, and inside the throat. Once SCP-496 infection, infection reaches the brain, the victim may suffer from delusions, disorganized thinking, extreme disorganized or abnormal motor behavior, and hallucinations. Once SCP-496 infection has a spread throughout the entire body, the following symptom will occur. Conversion of all organic matter into SCP-496. And there you go. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, and the picture they they showed of the of of an animal being infected is a manatee. Oh. What did manatees ever do to it? Thanks, Pika. <laughs> so basically, it's just calcium carbonate that's infecting everything that's turning it into a calcium carbonate so it can oh. become stronger or bigger or whatever wrong calcium isn't I'm calcium gonna... the thing in your bones yes I'm gonna be uh, dead honest here I did not hear anything about this SCP because I was focused on Hades to basically, it basically is just calcium carbonate that's in the water that if hits direct skin, it'll start infecting it and converting the, eventually converting the entire organic matter into calcium carbonate. It's like a slow, painful death. Okay, does, like, does that person become contagious then? Um, it's a pretty important factor. Valid. Yep, it is very contagious. Damn. Okay then. Um. Seeing how the, uh, a one tiny fish, once it got introduced with a bunch of other fish that was, in, uh, yeah, that one tiny fish that was infected got introduced by a gigantic pawn of fish. All of them got infected. E. In other words, if this comes to America, we're fucked. Well, if it's in manatees, it's probably in America. Well, it's actually currently in Jakarta, Indonesia. Oh. That's also Near really bad. Also, manatees travel. Yeah. Yeah. Like, a lot. Most they might large be big... aquatic life forms travel a lot. Yeah. They might be big blobs, but they like the water and they go, wah! Also, I know like manatees are around Florida when it's in, uh, during wintertime. They'll go to uh, like near heating plants or electrical plants in, in Florida. So, yeah. They're, yeah, they could probably really easily go to america so uh the in the worst place is florida too that's the worst thing it's florida and besides that indonesia that means that this thing is like geographically very close to the most populated regions of earth yeah so uh Uh, I'd say continent. Also, yeah. apparently, what I f I'm seeing right now is every time they go to trying to con contain it, so far, they have their own crew get infected. Oh. They mm -hmm. have to have that tell their MTF to stay away, like from far away, to contain it. Yeah. So what did you, what did you say again? I'd say continent. Yeah. I mean, as long as they don't say in the document that it's spreading, like, way more. <laughs> I guess a part of it is, like, to it's me... It's not spreading more because it's contained. Yeah, yeah. and, like, to, to me, uh, while it's obviously possible, I feel like humans would ultimately still be able to survive most diseases because... Humans are incredibly stubborn pieces of shit nine times out of ten. Yeah. So I don't think it would turn to XK. What I'm trying to get at. Why is the Twitch player not working? What the I fuck? I don't know. Also, uh, this is also a joke SCP that's next. <laughs> Wait, what? 
Okay. Its original class was Super Keter. Now it's just Keter. What the fuck? Super Keter is a thing? <laughs> what? What the fuck is Super Keter? <laughs> I don't know what the fuck is. It's, it's, it's even worse than Keter. But that's already a class. That's a polyon. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, SCP 500 J, formerly known as Dead Expunged, is a female human possessing a wide range of abilities. Those ascribed to base staff are uh, reducing any adult male to tears, creating an urge to not a word I'm not allowed to say on Twitch, causing an addiction in a wide array of alcoholic beverages. A death glare at any passing female, uh, which has been assured to the research team to result in the death of said female. The ability to track no matter the location. The ability to attempt communication at the worst possible time. And They're nice guys! An intuitive ability to tell when someone is lying and deconstruct the, the entire lie. Causing a massive mental breakdown of any male. Arguing for up to several hours. And that's it. If the powers, by order of 05 8, SP 500 J is to simply be contained within no testing. With, uh, with no testing. It should be noted that all required SP documentation and revised security plans were provided by 05 8, who assured the on site command staff that the entire 05 Council approved the new procedures. 05-8 also mentioned that the current communication blackout will be lifted as soon as possible. Uh, Wait, there's a oh. there's a side note, and it doesn't even evolve this SCP. Hold on, SCP-076-2 awoke in his temporary containment to find a portable DVD player playing Deadliest Warrior nonstop. This place stated SCP-076-2 long enough to allow security to restrain him. For his efforts in containing SCP-076-2, Scruffy has been promoted to head of Area 25B security. Who is Scruffy? <laughs> I don't know! I don't know! <laughs> don't wanna... Is that a dog? Dog was good boy. Doggy got promotion. Doggy was a very, very good boy, apparently. Dog's Doggy is part of military me. now. Do what is Doggy's this? In Doggy's in charge of extremely dangerous chemicals and stuff. I Ooh. love I love how the first power this thing claims to have is reducing any adult male to tear. Uh, any reducing any adult male to tears. <laughs> Though he is the most over the top No, it's a female. Oh she oh. Wait, did it mention that? I didn't yeah, it said, hear that one. It said female human possessing. Oh, okay. Female human possessing. Okay, then... Wait, is this just a Karen? <laughs> Maybe. My dog grew a leg. This is a Karen that was defeated by a dog. <laughs> Using a movie. No, no. That SCP that was mentioned is Abel. You know, 076. That's Abel. Why is Abel mentioned in this? What the fuck? It's a is Abel a word Abel. that you can't say on Twitch? I, Abel? That's his name. I'm so confused on what the fuck. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think they're going to care as long as we say that Abel is his name. Like Cain and Abel. Wait. Why would Twitch have an issue with the word Abel? I don't know. No, I mean, I mean the no s s word that you can't oh. say. On Twitch. Oh, because reasons. Well, yeah, no. <laughs> that one's off. Is is Abel an s word that ends with a p? I don't know anything about Abel lore. What is the lore of Abel? Except for like... Alright, in the Bible, Adam and Eve had two children. 
I know, I know, I know, I know, I know that. I know, I know that, but like, SCP. Well, it's similar to the Bible story, only Abel is the psycho, psycho, psychopathic dick, and Cain is pretty nice. Yeah. Also, what do we categorize this as? Do we do spooky or reassign? Because this is not a keter. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and it's definitely oh, not no. super well, keter. It's pretty terrifying. Well, you see, that's the thing. I would consider Spood tier, but why would we put a dangerous Karen in the tier that is named after Spood? Fair Spood point. Is, Reassigned. It's really chaos. Spood is chaos. Well, you that's fair. Is Spood? I missed. I missed the Spood stream. Spood is my sibling. Oh Spood yeah. Is Spood. Does not need to talk to anyone. No, wait, I was told this. I completely forgot. I was like, I, yeah, I am too focused on dogs right now. They've existed for years. They've existed longer than you existed. So I decided to put it in reassigned because there's no way in hell that's a Keter. (laughs) It's just a Karen. Okay, tell me. (laughs) What's the lore of Spood? Lore of my sibling? Food is another, is, is just a silly way to say spider. Yep. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna read it fully, but it already says in it what category goes in. So. <laughs> and, Food could be categorized as a trapdoor spider. Tra- Okay. With the personality of a trapdoor spider. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, next SCP. SCP-505 is a model redacted uh, fiber castell fountain pen produced in 2001 for documentation of its acquisition by the Foundation. See the addendum or whatever. It is identical to, in all respects to a standard fountain pen apart from its association uh, apart from its association with SP505-1 SP505-1 is a black ink produced by SP505 which exhibits the property of self-replication SP505-1 spreads a, at a variable rate affected by the substance it comes into contact with the amount of SP505-1 present Quantities, quantities of SP501-505-1 have been shown to increase at rates between 0.5 and 540 milliliters per second. Standard ink removing chemicals are able to par- uh, partially remove SP505-1 and inhibits its spread. However, sodium hydroxide is necessary to remove SP505-1 contamination completely and has shown to be ineffective in environments with particularly high SP505-1 concentrations. Fortunately, the growth rate of SP505-1 appears to be inversely proportional to its quantity at high concentrations, whilst the observed effects of this are negligible in most cases. This inverse growth phenomenon provides the only explanation for the partial containment of SP505-1 Despite of a number of cases of large-scale environmental contamination, which were projected to otherwise lead to an NK class end of the world scenario, like whilst SCP-505-1 exhibits no unusual properties other than its constant spread and partial resistance to re- removal, it nonetheless poses serious difficulties for control. SCP-505-1 will flow across non-absorbent surfaces and pass through porous surface of an identical fashion to normal ink. All liquid or solid objects or beings in contact with SCP-505-1 will be contaminated. SCP-505-1 will still adhere to non-porous surfaces such as metals, but newly produced SCP-505-1 will constantly flow off. Non-porous materials 
are thus catalysts for SCP-505-1 spread and all SCP-505-1 con contamination should be covered in porous materials such as blotting paper for this reason. It is not possible to permanently contain SCP-505-1 in a non-porous container as said container's contents will gradually increase in quantity leading to increased pressure and subsequent, subsequent rupture. All containers being used to contain SP-505-1 must therefore be drained periodically to prevent a containment breach. SCP-505-1's effect on its environment are identical to those of, of an equivalent uh, quantity of standard fountain pen ink. SCP-505-1 exposure will inevitably lead to the death of no living, organis or living organisms. Plant matter will be killed due to inhib inhibition of photosynthesis, whereas animals will be killed due to chemical poisoning. In humans and oh. other mammals, SCP-505-1 contact will most likely be via the skin, where it will spread until it reaches an orifice or, or a break in the skin and subsequently enter the vascular system through mucous membranes. SCP-505-1 will spread through the vascular vasculature and have catastrophic effects on all organ, sy all organ systems. It reaches as it continuously replicates and is unable to be excreted by the urinary system. Cause of death is generally multiple organ failure, although in most cases affected in Individuals will be terminated and decontaminated prior to this. SCP-505-1 also has an increased rate of spread through non-viscous fluids such as water, as would be expected of normal ink. Any contamination on the water table with SCP-505-1 must be prevented at all costs due to, to the potential for an NK class of inevitable scenario. It is unknown whether SCP-505-1s a aforementioned property of an inversely proportional rate of spread will manifest in fluids such as experimentation with high quantities of SCP-505-1 is strictly forbidden. Thus, environmental SCP-505-1 contamination and water sources must be met with immediate damming and draining into storage tanks of all affected areas. I just gotta say it's viscous. Oh, viscous. All right. Yeah. I've some of those words I've not seen before, and I just guessed. Yeah, <laughs> vicious, vicious, and viscous are two very different things. Yeah, but anyway, like, like I said, we already it already says which class it goes to, <laughs> like multiple times. Uh it's classification and have no interest in trying to change it. Yeah, agreed. I mean, you can't... It, it, they're having trouble containing it. Hmm. Well, yes. It is the evil ink. One day it might get out and destroy the world, but until then, it is contained for now. Hopefully. Question is for how long, though? Please don't say that. Wait, what if you use it on a Scarlet King? Could it work? Right? No. <laughs> I, I don't think we need to give you any Scarlet King. Please do Scarlet... not combine dangerous things. <laughs> the, Scarlet, the Scarlet King would probably just use it on other pe on the, which would probably just. First of all, the Scarlet King wouldn't let it get close to him. Second of all. The Scarlet King would just use that on everyone else. And just use it on the world. Actually, would use it, would like, yeah, would use it on the people, on the SCP Foundation members, so. Whatever. Use it on the people. Yep. Oh no, the people. Not the people. King suffering, as suffering caused it, is one of the things that helps it get stronger. So, I don't think I have to say anything else after that. Yeah, it's right. That was an idea that is about as good as, hey, what if we just launched all nukes on Earth at the Scarlet King and hope that works? 
<laughs> yeah, let's launch all nukes at this interdimensional being that we can't fucking see. Basically, if you launched all nukes at them, that would make them that much stronger. Yeah. Hence the analogy. See, but if you knew it was there, you definitely wouldn't want nukes at it. Yep. All right, next SCP. SCP-510 has thus far been proven difficult to fully identify. It is possible to f a form of microorganism or a form of nanite. Wait. Yeah. Is this the same one? No, or this is 510. You went on 510 next last time? Or, okay. We have moved from the ink and we are on a different SCP. Yeah, we're on okay. a different one. Yeah. Alright. The particles of SP510 appear to be surrounded by a field that causes a blurring effect even at high magnification. Tests have come back with widely varying results and samples have simultaneously exhibited properties of organic and non-organic matter, as well as properties of solids, liquids, and gases. Current research views it as a form of mold or virus due to its response to high heat and chemical sterilization. SCP-510 infests soft surfaces such as fabric, feathers, hair, or foam with the ability to remain dormant in such su substances for years. If SCP-510 encounters delta waves typically emitted by humans entering sleep, SCP-510 will activate and begin to infest any nearby organic life. Infestation follows a set progression, most often ending with the death of infested subjects after four or six days. SCP-510 appears to prefer mammalian life for infestation, primarily human beings. Attempting to artificially infest other life forms have met with very limited success. Possible applications of SP-510 and its life support function are being researched. High heat and highly acidic chemicals have been able to dissolve SP-510 particles. Dissolved particles leave behind no detectable residue. So I'm going to read the stages now. Stage 1 infestation. System, symptoms, exhaustion, fatigue, sleepness, general listlessness, itchy eyes, and general head pain. All but two of those are just symptoms for narcolepsy. Yep. <laughs> so, 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 right? Is narcolepsy an SCP? It is now. No. Uh, actually, I wouldn't. I wouldn't doubt it that it is. Like in some way, like another SCP causes it or something. I have no doubt in my mind that it exists. So, so if you have narcolepsy, you're fucked if you get this. <laughs> anyway. Description SCP 510 begins to form sting light extrusions which anchor into the skin. Extrusions continue to grow into the skin, contacting all major organs and systems in 8 to 24 hours. Subjects will grow progressively more tired during this time and will seek out quiet, dark areas to in which to sleep. Stage 2 Initial Manifestation Symptoms Deep Coma. Pillow formation by SP510 on the body, progressive inversion of biological systems. Description: SP510 forms large pillow-like growths on the body. These growths are warm and emit a soft light with a texture described as microfiber plush. Subjects slip into a deep coma, becoming totally unresponsive to any and all outside stimuli. SCP-510 will start to take over biological systems, causing blood, neural activity, and even oxygen to, oxygen to pass through the growth before being returned to the subject. It has been observed that the subjects at this stage enter a dream state more vivid than standard REM sleep. Stage 3. Full Manifestation. Symptoms. Total dependence on SCP-510 for all biological functions, 
bonding of the skin with, the, with SCP-510, soil reduction, and mental activity. Description. SCP-510 takes full control of all biological functions for the host organism. Damage to the growths at this point will result in any immediate death of the host, as the growths are now performing all biological functions for the body. A form of accelerated atrophy sets in with muscular and skeletal structures beginning to weaken and shrink, and total shutdown of most organs. Subjects are observed to lose 44% of their body mass during this stage. SCP-510 will directly bond to skin, replacing the thin threads with larger protrusions of the growths. The brain begins to slow down and does not register any pain or awareness of these changes, showing high st stimulation in areas with contentment and comfort. Stage 4. Conversion Symptoms. Rapid growth of SCP-510, major reduction in host physical mass, absorption of major organs and tissues by SCP-510, host brain enters the deep dream state. Description. SCP-510 be begins to compromise the basic structure of the body, absorbing organs, skin, bones, and muscles. Subject's mass will be reduced to one-tenth of initial size, with only a few tissues and tissues and brain remaining. The brain enters a state labeled de deep dreaming, in which brain activity is reduced to a point that a subject may be declared legally dead. However, brain oh. activity continues with the evidence of some sense of surroundings being recorded. This is remarkable considering most hosts at this stage are, are a brain, spinal cord, and a few clumps of tissue encased in SB510 gross. Activity in the stage seems to be initially located in comfort and contentment centers with ac activity shifting into fear and alarm centers as conversion continues. SP-510 begins to break down into individual particles on the surface of the gross. Stage 5. Resolution and Sporing Symptoms Absorbing of remaining tissues break down of SP-510 into individual particles. Description. SCP-510 SCP absorbs the remaining tissues, including the brain, over a period of 12 to 14 hours. Brain scans show highly elevated levels of activity constitute extreme fear or pain at this point, which slowly shifts back to a more relaxed state as the brain is absorbed. After full absorption, SCP-510 will break down into individual particles with a full breakdown of the gross after 3 hours. Particles will then float in the air until making contact with a receptive surface. And there you go, that's that SCP. Huh. It is sleep fungus. Yes. It will slowly destroy your body and use sleep as a way to do it better. Mm -hmm. And then it will reproduce mm -hmm. and do it over on someone else. Mm. So, I feel like based on what they said, they have it somewhat under control. They're able to control it potentially. Yeah. And since it like only, since it's not, since it only like transfers like during sleep and stuff, I think if I remember correctly, that's what I said. Um, I think City might be accurate. Discord! Thank you! <laughs> Sorry, it was it was muting me, and I was just like, I cannot fucking respond if Discord just keeps muting me. Um, <laughs> anyway, I feel like it might be bigger than City. After all, literally everyone sleeps. The only reason it's not yeah. spreading is because it's been contained. Mm -hmm. Well, so the reason I'm saying city is because depending, yeah, it could it could go country. Honestly. Well, think of this: the spores can spread anywhere they can be blown into, oh, or yeah. walk into. They just need you asleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So, mm. yeah. So continent then, I guess. Continent makes sense. They're not so intelligent that they can use airplanes or anything, but they definitely continent. Well, that's the thing. It uh, Something doesn't need intelligence to use an airplane. All it takes is a single person infected oh, with this. Shit, you're right. It's, or something oh, with shit. On it. It's more dangerous than continent, isn't it? Oh, crap. We need, like, a different classification for things that will likely not completely destroy the world, but are still bar larger than continent. Technically, that is technically SK, because not all X, not all XKs actually. Yeah, technically, the Foundation labels things as SK, even if they, if they have the ability to do so, but not exactly do it all the time. That's why I didn't create a separate okay, XK. They also technically label things that are cuter that don't necessarily destroy the world, like. That one SCP, I forgot her name, but she if she was outside of containment, she wouldn't technically destroy the world, just humanity and technology. Well, yeah, but uh, Peter classification isn't based primarily upon uh, threat level. It's based more upon containment issues. Yeah. Like how hard it is to keep in check. Uh, like if it was just like mere threat level then uh, I would say that most Euclids could easily become Keter especially something like the shy guy one or... image of that guy's face goes on the internet the earth is dead or a 173 yeah so bang. I feel like that would be really difficult though it would be difficult but the point being like if like just the sheer threat level of that oh. thing, I think is to the point of just completely screwing over most humans. And think like about they... it. Oh. And think about it. Since this thing infects like cushions and and all that stuff, think about what happened if I went to a mattress store. Exactly. Oh. Oh. <laughs> think about if it. <laughs> No, no. Even worse. Think about if it got on a freight, uh, a freight plane. A that was, Yeah, like, yeah, like a uh, a cargo plane. That's the word I was looking for. A cargo plane that's transporting any types of fabric. A factory. Oh shit. So we're gonna put an XK. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't get watched. <laughs> Everyone beware the sleep fungus. The sleep fungus. Like the opposite of the Russian sleep yeah, especially experiment. Right. Let's see. Give me a moment. I need to do something. What? There we go. Name officially changed. <laughs> sleep fungus. I am now sleep fungus. I have this one wobble dog uh, named Kiwi, and he constantly looks scared for his life. Okay. I would imagine that's because it's called a wobble dog. That's what the species of, like, wobble dog is called. They're called wobble dogs. Anyway. Um, next well, it probably doesn't have any, like... Right. It's just like a box with legs, so... Who mm -hmm. has left a comment on the kinder... Wait, Bright, did you upload a video of the kindergarten stuff yet? Yes. I did not see that. I need to go watch that sometime soon. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, that just reminds me. Uh, I need to mention this before I forget it. Next time we do a kindergarten stream, there are two options for how we start up. Either A... We start up with continuing the main quest revolving around Applegate, or B, we could start by doing a little bit of therapy by exacting a vengeance upon Cindy. I fucking hate Cindy. Vengeance. Every, every, everyone hates Cindy. Cindy probably hates Cindy. 
<laughs> oh my gosh.